So in today's lecture is going to be about the autonomic nervous system. I'm going to talk about the ganglia um, and I think after the after this video you'll be able to answer probably any question asked about the sympathetic or the parasympathetic ganglia. Okay, so a little bit brief about the autonomic nervous system. It deals with the involuntary stuff of the body includes the beating of the heart, respiration, common reflexes, uh, digestion, urination, reproduction, the stress response and even salivation. So everything is controlled involuntarily by the body. We have no control over it. So there are basically two parts of the autonomic nervous system. It's the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system basically deals with um, responses like the fight or flight conditions. Like, you know, when you're under stress, imagine you're walking down a street and you hear someone's footsteps behind you. So the system which is going to be activated is the sympathetic nervous system. You know, it's going to make you forced to either fight that person or just run away, you know produce a lot of energy in the body and just run away from there so that's the reason it's called the fight or flight response so there are various ganglia throughout the body with the preganglionic and the postganglionic fibers we need not go into much detail about the sympathetic nervous system and their ganglion because they are not much tested on so the preganglionic fibers for the sympathetic nervous system, they originate in the thoracolumbar region of the spinal cord. And if you would ever find a question, that would be a little bit rare, but if you would ever find a question, they're going to be asking you about the, um, the region from where the preganglionic sympathetic fibers come from. And the answer is going to be the intermediolateral nucleus of the spinal cord. It's, it's okay if you cannot remember it, but it's just in the rarest chance if they can ever ask this question. So the fibers originate from T1 to L2. That's probably along the whole length of the spinal cord. So what happens is basically a preganglionic fiber, it travels from the point of origin, it travels to a ganglion. From there, it synapses with a postganglionic neuron. And then the postganglionic fibers leave the ganglion and reach the target organ. Now, in reaching the target organ, you know, there's a basic difference that can be asked sometimes between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous systems. So the ganglia of the parasympathetic nervous systems, sorry, uh, the ganglia of the uh, yeah, the ganglia of the parasympathetic nervous system, they can be either located near the target organ or inside the target organ whereas the um, the ganglia of the sympathetic nervous system are located along the prevertebral and the paravertebral chain of um, ganglia just remember prevertebral and paravertebral ganglia that's more than enough for the, par the sympathetic nervous system now we go to the parasympathetic nervous system. This one is responsible for the rest and digest response. This is a system which works when you're calm and when you're like sitting on a sofa watching a movie or something like that. It kind of works in the exact opposite sense of the, the, of the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system can raise the heartbeat, but the parasympathetic one decreases the heartbeat. So in most of the condition, it works in a um, contradictory condition. So, <coughs> excuse me. The parasympathetic nervous system includes the four main cranial nerves. The number three, that's the oculomotor nerve. The number seven, that's facial nerve. Number nine, that's glossopharyngeal nerve. And number 10, that's vagus nerve. And, in, and it includes the pelvic splanchnic nerves. You might have noticed I've um, you know, underlined and bolded it because this is asked many times. Like, you know, 
you can remember these four but this one has to be remembered you know you have to memorize it pelvic splanchnic nerves and they arise from s2 s3 and s4 i don't have any trick for it or anything just kind of remember it because it's really important then um there are four main ganglions ganglia which are paired and they supply the um head and neck region there are the ciliary ganglion the pterygopeltine ganglion the submandibular ganglion and the otic ganglion so the beginning with the first one the ciliary ganglion it's located behind the eye it's okay if you don't remember it but it contains the preganglionic axons or fibers from the edinger westphal nucleus this is really important and i think just write it down on a piece of paper or do whatever but just remember it the ciliary ganglion preganglionic fibers originate from the edinger westphal nucleus and it's present in the brainstem the postganglionic fibers from the ganglion um, they travel via the short ciliary nerves and supply the two muscles of the eye they are the sphincter pupillae and the ciliaris muscles so here is a small stupid diagram which kind of may be helpful to remember this is the edinger westphal nucleus these are the preganglionic fibers which arise from the nucleus travel to the ciliary ganglion synapse with the postganglionic fiber and the postganglionic fibers come out through and travel via the short ciliary nerve and supply the two muscles i forgot to add the name they are the sphincter pupillae and the ciliaris muscles so this was all about the ciliary ganglion and then we move on to the pterygopalatine ganglion this is also known as Meckel's ganglion or nasal ganglion or sphenopalatine ganglion now i've put this in bold because there are many questions where you will be asked about this phenopalatine ganglion so don't get confused or don't get scared it's the same as the pterygopalatine ganglion it is located in the pterygopalatine fossa this one is also important to know because we have another ganglion which is located in another fossa so you probably want to know this you know they share the same name so this one is going to be easy to remember pterygopalatine ganglion is in the pterygopalatine fossa that's pretty easy to remember this is the largest of all the four ganglia which i'm going to be talking about in this lecture these are the largest of all the parasympathetic ganglia the preganglionic fibers they arise from the greater petrosal nerve better rem remember this one because we also have another nerve which has a similar name we have the lesser petrosal nerve so don't get confused this one the pterygopalatine ganglion preganglionic fibers are travel via the greater petrosal nerve synapse into the ganglion and the postganglionic fibers arise from the ganglion and supply the lacrimal gland the paranasal sinuses the nasal cavity glands and the pharynx so this is another stupid diagram you know these diagrams are kind of stupid but you know if you remember just this much you know make it on your own on a piece of paper you're gonna be able to remember them easily the third ganglion is the submandibular ganglion it's located above the deep portion of the submandibular gland on the higher glossus muscle you know you don't need to go so much detail about the location but just to give a brief idea about it um the preganglionic fibers originate from the superior salivatory nucleus this is also important because the next ganglion is going to have a similar nucleus it's going to be the inferior salivatory nucleus so you can remember it this way the submandibular ganglion s s you know submandibular is originate the preganglionic fibers originate from the superior salivatory nucleus travel via the lingual nerve and the coda tympani nerve these two nerves are also important because the lingual nerve as we all know it supplies the general sensory of the anterior two-thirds of the tongue the coda tympani nerve supplies the taste for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue so you better better remember these two nerves separately also 
Then we have the postganglionic fibers that supply the oral mucosa, the submandibular, and the sublingual glands. So here's the diagram for it. This is the um, this is the nucleus. That's the superior salivatory nucleus. We have the ganglion over here. The preganglionic fibers travel via the lingual nerve and the chorda tympani nerve. The postganglionic fibers travel travel through and supply the submandibular gland, the sublingual gland, and the oral mucosa. Last, we have the otic ganglion. It is located immediately below the foramen ovale. It's located in the infratemporal fossa. So as we saw in the previous slide, the submandibular gland is look sorry, uh, the pterygopalatine gland uh, uh, ganglion is located in the pterygopalatine fossa, and the otic ganglion is located in the infratemporal fossa. We have the preganglionic fibers, they originate in the inferior salivatory nucleus and travel via the lesser petrosal nerve. Now remember we had the submandibular gland, the, the preganglionic fibers originated from the superior salivatory nucleus and the otic ganglion fibers originate from the inferior salivatory nucleus. You know, better don't get confused between these two. And they travel via the lesser petrosal nerve. The postganglionic fibers travel via the auriculotemporal nerve and supply the parotid gland. So this one is really important. You know, you, you can, can get questions about the nerve supply of the parotid gland, you know, and if you know this, then it's going to be the auriculotemporal nerve. Oh, I forgot to put a diagram for this one, but I think you can just draw it yourself, just a rough diagram for it. So that's it. Um, you can post any other doubts or anything if you have about the preganglionic and the postganglionic fibers and everything and I'll be ready to help you anytime. You can find questions about um, uh, these topics like uh, what is the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber for the otic ganglion or the submandibular ganglion, what is the postganglionic fiber and I think this lecture is more than enough to answer all those questions. Okay, see you next time in another lecture. Thanks for liking and subscribing.